Hi everyone, I'm Sean, and we're back with another episode of The 101. So, so far we've talked about NJV, and we've compared it to different types of antivirus in terms of how it stops malware and non-malware attacks. And we even took time to define non-malware. But what about malware? It's a big topic, I know. But if this series is designed to do anything, it's to get to the core concepts of endpoint security. And so that's what we're going to do. To start what will naturally become an ongoing discussion about malware, let's first try to figure out what exactly it is. And to do that, we need to ask the question, what are the different types of malware? Okay, so here's the challenge with talking about malware. It's about as broad a topic as it gets when it comes to endpoint security. It's an umbrella term to describe any kind of software that's intended to do harm. Malicious software, malware. You see what we did there? To ask the question, what is malware? Or how do I stop malware? It's just too broad a question, and it doesn't yield actionable answers. In order to start this discussion off correctly, we need to go a level deeper and really dig into the different types of malware, what they are, and how they differ. Okay, let's answer the question first and then dive into the specifics. Though many variants exist, there are eight major types of malware categorized primarily by what they do and how. They are viruses, worms, trojans, adware, spyware, rootkits, botnets, and ransomware. Okay, let's start at the top of the list and get a quick definition for each type. So viruses cause damage, and they do that by either slowing down or completely crashing applications, data, or entire systems. They're designed to self-propagate by latching onto a good application, becoming part of it, and riding its executable to initiate its goals. Worms are also designed to self-propagate, but they don't need another program to run. That's why worms tend to target system vulnerabilities to automatically infect and then spread. They don't need to wait for an unsuspecting victim to click a link or start a process. Trojans, like in the epic from which they take their name, hide malicious code in the package of a seemingly good application, which typically results in remote access for an attacker to use in the future. Trojans use this approach to gain trust so that the end user willingly runs the program in order to evade traditional defenses. Adware is annoying. Its sole purpose is to serve up ads without the user's consent in order to make money. After infection, adware is really good at resisting your attempts to remove it, often digging deep and entangling itself within the registry or master boot records. Spyware monitors your activities. It records keystrokes, web activity, message logs, sometimes it even grabs access to your webcam. Its primary attribute is stealth. It's designed to evade any attempt to detect it and to pass whatever it uncovers in a stealthy, secure manner. Rootkits are designed to dig deep in order to gain administrative access, either by attacking known vulnerabilities that enable privilege escalation, or by tricking an unsuspecting victim into giving it up. In either case, rootkits, when successful, tend to phone home in order to create a backdoor for an attacker or an automated attack to continue. Botnets are also designed to root into endpoints so they can be controlled remotely, but their goal isn't to steal data from an endpoint. Instead, they turn endpoints into zombies, unwilling participants in larger attacks that tend to target other machines by remote attackers. And finally, ransomware, the scourge of 2017. But really, it's been around for decades. Ransomware is designed to encrypt valuable data on your endpoint and, well, hold it ransom. It gives you the decryption keys only after you've paid a certain sum of money. Okay, so what do we take away from our discussion today? Malware is a broad term, yet we talk about it and how to stop it as if it was a singular thing. This way of thinking can confuse and distract, especially when talking about how to prevent infections in the first place. On the other hand, characterizing malware by what it does and how it does it, even generally speaking, puts us in a much better position to assess what we may be susceptible to, based off of who we are and what kind of assets we have. And when we talk about malware this way, it shows us why a new approach is sorely needed. If we can develop defenses that target malware's techniques, rather than scrambling to constantly update our blacklist, will be much more effective at stopping malware at its tracks. But more on that next week. And that's our time for today. Join us next week as we continue our discussion about malware. I know it's a broad topic, but we'll spend lots of episodes digging into it, going through the ins and outs, and making sure that you're prepared with the best information possible. Of course, if you have questions, we want to hear them. Tweet us at carbonblack underscore inc. Use the hashtag the 101. Or email us at the 101 at carbonblack.com. It's our mission to define endpoint security one question at a time. You all are going to help us get there. I'm Sean. Thanks for tuning in, and we'll see you next week.